focus on your breath. And as for what's going to happen when you focus on the breath, put that thought aside. And where the meditation is going to take you and how it's going to take you there, put those thoughts aside as well. Be careful that you don't know too much, because what you know too much of is not really knowing. A lot of it is guesswork. A lot of our preconceived notions come out of ignorance. And that's precisely what we're trying to get rid of, and yet our ignorance then shapes the way we practice. So it's important you try to clear away of as, as many of those expectations as possible when you're coming to meditate. Just be with the breath. When the breath comes in, know what's going in. When it goes out, know what's going out. That's all you really have to know right now. And as for what's going to happen with the next breath or the one after that, well, wait till those breaths come. John Fung once noted that nowadays we have lots of books on meditation, lots of explanations, and in some ways it's a help, but in other ways it's a hindrance. And a hindrance that we take a lot of our perceptions, our memories that we've picked up from books and Dharma talks, and we bring them in to clutter up the present moment. That actually gets in the way of seeing what's going on. This gets compounded with our, our general impatience. We want to see results fast. And so in order to make them happen fast, we squeeze them too much in the direction we think they're supposed to go. But a lot of the results that really come from the meditation have to come from simply allowing the causes to do their work, to develop on their own, without your having to push them too much in the direction you think they should go. So if you see your thoughts leaning into the next moment or what's going to happen further on in the future, just pull back. Say you're right here, right now. As a John Lee advises many times in his talks, start out small. Notice where you feel the breath and watch it. And if it doesn't feel comfortable, you can nudge it into what seems to be a more comfortable direction. Don't be too great of a hurry to go on to the next step, because we've got to come from a position of strength as we meditate. There's a passage in the Ken where the Buddha says a person who doesn't have a basic level of happiness and goodness inside just cannot do goodness. It sounds like a catch-22. But that's not the point. The point is we all have a certain amount of goodness in our minds. And so tap into that first. And the goodness here not only means good intentions, but having basically a good-natured attitude to what you're doing, a good-natured attitude to the people around you. That's why we have that chant on goodwill every night, every night. You bring a certain level of humor to the practice, a humor to, that allows you to laugh at your own mistakes. Without that, things start getting bitter. When they get bitter inside, then you start lashing out, lashing out at people around you. Start criticizing the techniques, and all kinds of things you can criticize. But if you can sit back from it and tap into your own basic good-natured attitude, and it's there inside all of us, try to bring that to the fore. And then work from that. It may be a small thing, but you've got to start small. Start with what you know. The breath is coming in. You know that? Yes, you know that. It's going out. You know? Yes, you know that. Okay, know just that much. Don't forget that. Is it comfortable or not? Well, you may not be sure. Could it be more comfortable? Well, experiment and see. Try to sensitize yourself to how the breathing feels. Without this level of sensitivity, it all becomes mechanical. When it becomes mechanical, it becomes a chore. And when it becomes a chore, the mind is going to start to rebel. So ask yourself, what really feels good when you're breathing right now? I was saying earlier today, if you can't figure out what really feels good, just hold your breath for a while until the mind comes to a point where you 
screaming at you, you've got to breathe. You've got to breathe. Okay, when you breathe in, notice where it feels really good as you breathe in. Take that as a guide. We in the West seem to be especially cut off from our own bodies. We're so much in our heads that the air of the body becomes unexplored territory, like those old maps from the 15th, 16th century. They would show the coastlines of continents, but then big blank areas in the middle. Here be tigers, they would say. Who knew, who knew what was in there? That's the same with the body. We know a little bit about it, but we huge unexplored areas inside. So we take as our beachhead this one point where we know the breath is coming in, we know the breath is coming out, we know whether it's comfortable or not, and we begin to get a sense of what adjustments can be made to make it more comfortable. So it feels really good just breathing in right there, breathing out right there. And as for the other steps in the meditation, put them aside for the time being. Make sure you've got this step well under control. It's the people who are trying to take on too much all at once that end up not mastering anything at all. Even if your progress is incremental, at least it's progress. You're building solidly on a solid foundation. That's what matters. Otherwise, the meditation is like a ladder that you lean up against a very unstable wall. You may be able to climb very high, but once the wall falls down, you're going to be really in bad straits. Try to build step by step on what you really know. And that's for what you've heard about how the meditation is supposed to develop, or even if you've had experiences in the past when it's developed in interesting ways. Put those aside for the time being. Don't let them clutter up your mind, because any progress in the meditation has to come from being very solidly in the present moment, fully focused on what you've got right here. And if you've got a lot of expectations cluttering up your view, you're not going to see what you've got right here. And so whatever progress isn't genuine. So as John Lee often says, be willing to be dumb about the meditation. Sometimes this is called beginner's mind, but it's, I think, for me it's always been more effective to say, well, be dumb about it. So much you may have heard about the meditation, but how much do you really know? Well, you know right now the breath is coming in, you know it's going out. You know if your mind is with the breath or it's wandered off. Focus on being really clear about that as continuously as possible. And it's that continual, continual clarity that actually creates the state of concentration you're looking for, the developed mindfulness you're hoping for. It starts in these tiny steps. So whether the results come fast or slow, be sure that at least you're getting the the cause is right. And they're simple. Be with the breath. All the way in, all the way out. Just this breath. And if the breath is uncomfortable, you can adjust it. You're not required to breathe in a particular way, or you're not required to be totally uninvolved with the breath. There's going to be some involvement with the breath, whether it's conscious or unconscious. So might as well be conscious, might as well learn how to be sensitive to what's going on. And this simple exercise, if you allow it to do its work, will bring the results you want. In fact, it will bring results better than you might expect. If you clutter up your meditation with your expectations, that's all, all you get is things that seem to fit in with your expectations. But if you allow it to be a little bit more open-ended, it creates a possibility for other things to happen as well. Many times better things, more genuine things. So have faith in the pro process. If you've got the causes right, the results have to, be co have to come. And even though it seems a small thing that you're doing right here, remember all the great things in the world had to start out small. Coastal redwoods come from the tiniest imaginable little seeds. 
So even though the seed may be small, don't underestimate its potential. The spot where you were the breath may seem to be a small thing. But as you get down into it, you find there's a lot there. In fact, the Buddha's whole teaching is on causality. You have one big consistent point that whatever is happening in the universe, the basic pattern is something you can discern right here in the present moment. It's what in chaos theory they call scale invariance. The patterns on the large scale, on the macro scale, are the same things happening on the micro scale. Well, you've got the micro scale right here. On the macro scale, you see that even scientific theories keep changing, sometimes very fast. They're not anything you can directly observe. They're based on so many assumptions. But on the micro scale, right here in the present moment, your mind with a breath. All the basic processes that you're going to have to know for awakening are occurring right here. And so it's simply a matter of getting more and more sensitive right here. So even though it may seem like a small spot, it's got a lot of potential. It's like those seeds they have in Thailand. There's a particular plant that has a seed. Its diameter is about that of a quarter. But if you break this, Break the shell, stick it into about three or four gallons of water. Come back a couple hours later, it turns out the, what was inside the seed was just sitting there waiting to soak up water. They look like little vermicelli noodles, and they will fill your entire three or four gallon container. So this small spot in the present moment is like that. It's, there's a lot to tease out in here. So don't be disdainful of its potential. Learn to start out small, and those small things are going to reward you. Like the old fable of the mouse and the lion. Okay. The lion saved the mouse's life, and later on the mouse was able to save the lion's life, even though the lion originally was pretty disdainful of what the mouse claimed it was going to be able to do, but it could. It could eat through that net. And so this little present moment you've got right here, don't step on it and hoping that you're going to get someplace higher. Focus right here and really give it a chance to open up. And whether it opens up fast or slow, that's not the issue. The issue is that you give it the space, you give it the time. You're patient enough and watchful enough to allow it to open. So when we say that big things grow from small things, it's not that it's going to have to grow in such a way that other people might notice. It's just that what's there in the present moment becomes a lot more a lot clearer. The intricacies of what are going on right here, that becomes played up in a much larger perspective if you give it the time to develop. So start out small. If you have to be small for a long time, that doesn't matter. What matters is that when the progress does come, it's solid progress. <laughs>